And welcome back to Epic Arms. Today, why does it keep doing that? And welcome back to Epic Arms. Today, we're gonna to be reviewing the Smith & Wesson FPC. So this is the best survival rifle. This is the best backpacking rifle. This is the best apocalypse rifle. Or insert anything else you need to tell yourself or to tell your wife that this is the right buy for you. This rifle is pretty damn awesome. It's not without flaws, I should say, but it is a fantastic little planking rifle. This rifle in Canada retails for $1,000, or in the US it's about $550. It's a compact folding 9mm rifle that takes M&P mags, so 23 round magazines, and it comes with three mags, so one in the grip, and actually it comes with two that fit very nicely and conveniently in the stock, which also helps kind of balance out the rifle. Super really nice fact that they did that. So before we start off the review, I am gonna mention that this rifle has 600 rounds through it, and it has ran without even one malfunction. So it is very reliable, at least up to that amount of rounds. First, let's start with the action. It does have a charging handle on either side, well, which is technically the same charging handle, which is easy to use. Now, it's not perfect, there's a lot of things on this rifle that are not perfect, and that's one of them. The charging handle will get caught on your beard. Mine is no exception. Every time this, this action cycles, it'll grab a little damn piece of my beard and yank on it, which is, well, not every time, but almost every time. It's rather frustrating. Also, it doubles as a retainer. So on this side, there's a tiny little notch, and if you press this little uh, release here, it'll allow you to fold, and it'll retain the, um, well, the rifle in place like this. Simply by pulling on it, it opens up quite nicely and quite quickly. Next on this rifle is it does have a bolt release, which really, really neat to have because the Caltech Sub 2000 does not have one. Now, if this bolt release was functional or, you know, functional at least like usably functional, I would say that would be awesome, but that is not really the case. So uh, the bolt is locked back, the magazine is removed, so it's kind of simulating as if we have rounds in our magazine. If I press the mag magazine release, I will go with the one on this side just because it's where my thumb is because I'm a righty. I will apply an enormous amount of pressure. I had it earlier. Ah, that did not work. Which... Okay, I got it going earlier. There we go. The fact that you have it means it should work properly. <laughs> so that's a perfect example of why the bolt release is totally trash. <laughs> it would be great if they fixed this before releasing it. Just saying. My next complaint is the magazine release is too small. So we got a magazine in here, and if I'm holding it like this, I have to really push my thumb much further forward to attempt to release that magazine. If it was protruding more, a little bit larger, I'd easily be able to drop that magazine. Alternatively, I have to bring the rifle in front of me like this in order to drop the magazine easily. Not particularly convenient. A nice thing about this grip, however, it does have interchangeable grips, very much like the M&P. Next, let's talk about the trigger. On their website, they advertise this, they advertise that it has a very crisp break, which I feel like that is the biggest pile of BS that I've read all week because this is completely the opposite. This has to be the creepiest trigger that I've tried short of a bullpup, specifically the Norinco T97, which has an atrocious trigger. Everybody agrees that it's awful. And this trigger is also rather awful. I mean, like, it has a lot of creep. It also has one of these little detents on the front, which, personally, I really do not like. It does not add an extra flavor of convenience to using this rifle. It's just not very nice to use. It's just that level of creep. The amount of creep before it breaks is not really nice. Like, if they could do something like a nice trigger group, like, you know, in their um, Smith & Weston, um, I forget the name, I have a pistol of it. Like, that trigger is freaking beautiful. If they had something even remotely close, which I understand this is a polymer frame, which puts a lot of constraints on 
designing a trigger that works nicely. I mean, anyway, that'd be great if they had a nicer trigger in this. Next is the magazine storage. So the fact that it can store two mags in the buttstock, one in the grip, big 10 out of 10 for that. The execution, however, not a big fan. So we have magazine releases here. Now, intuitively, you'd assume this one is related to this one and this side is related to this one. It is quite the opposite. And if you want to release that one, it's this one. So it's like opposite day. If an aftermarket company, you know, maybe Tandem Cross wants to create a fix for that, I would be very, very happy if they did. Which, I mean, I feel like that's kind of in their niche, so it'd be awesome if that happens. Next, let's talk about the barrel. So the American version has a 16 and a quarter inch barrel, while the Canadian has an 18 point 16 inch barrels. They're both threaded at a half by 28, so you can put a suppressor, a muzzle breaker, whatever you really feel like it. Uh, my complaint, which it's a complaint, it's not a complaint, it's a little bit of a complaint, is the barrel shroud is totally plastic. It does feel rather solid though, they added enough reinforcement behind it that it is a pretty solid shroud, so at least there's that. Uh, and we have M-locks all over the place in a full Picatinny rail, all, a full plastic Picatinny rail all over the top. And topped on this uh, rifle, you're going to notice this is the Rhydon Tactics 3. It's not a three power magnification, it is their one step above their X1 uh, magnification optic. So either of those are really great optics, would be really great fitted for this rifle. So I really enjoyed using this Rhydon uh, Tactics on this, it's, I feel it's perfectly suited. Most of the time on like say a 223, I'd put something like a three power magnification, but for a nine mil, I feel like a red dot is, is ideal. And, uh, and this red dot does have a quick release, which is quite nice. Lastly and not least is the warranty. So I should be specific, this is for the original owner only. It covers free of defects and workmanship within one year of purchase. Now here's the kicker. This is a little bit confusing. It's followed by a lifetime service policy. I'm just gonna read this excerpt to you here. Um, the lifetime service policy covers functional defects. It does not include firearm finish, grips, magazines, or sight. The lifetime service policy is an addition and not an extension to the Smith & Wesson warranty. The warranty gives you specific legal rights. You may also have other rights that vary from state to state. So if you have any experience with either the warranty or the lifetime service policy, I would be more than happy to, you know, understand what the difference is between the two and how they kind of apply. And if you have any experience with Smith & Wesson warranty, please share your feedback below. So guys, thanks for watching Epic Arms. If you guys enjoyed this video, can consider hitting like and consider hitting subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, head on over to cdnprecision.com. Thanks for watching Epic Arms.